All right, well, good evening, no, everybody. We'll go ahead and get started. Um, no, you're good. For those of you, yep. For those of you that don't know me, my name is Billy Sutton. I handle the nutrition and formulations work here for Delmarva Feed. I've been with them nearly 14 years now, and Delmarva Feed has been in business for about 20 years. We primarily formulate manufacture feeds for dairy, beef, equine, pigs, sheep, and goats, uh, poultry, and we use as much local grain as we can when possible. Uh, service area includes the entire Eastern Shore of Maryland, all of Delaware, Southeastern Pennsylvania, Southern New Jersey. Um, we appreciate you guys tuning in tonight. We're gonna to talk some show cattle with Miles Tenyes with Show Rate. And he's got all sorts of information and tidbits on how to advance your project from start to finish for this show season. So with that, Miles, I'll turn it over to you. Yeah, absolutely. Well, uh, certainly a pleasure. Uh, to be invited tonight, and uh, I know that uh, if you've had the opportunity to tune in to the other species, it uh, has always been maybe someone else or uh, maybe not as familiar of a face as mine, uh, or is mine, excuse me, um, this evening, but uh, just to give you a quick uh, brief background on what I do, um, so I actually live in uh, southern Illinois, just start the southern part of Illinois. I work for a show right now. I'm on six years this fall. Um, so <clears throat> it's, uh, it's been a, a very fast growing uh, elite brand of show feed. And uh, it was like that before I started. And <clears throat> it was a rapidly growing show feed in the Midwest right here where I'm at. And um, so got the opportunity to start working for show right. Um, along with show right, uh, we run about 110 uh, commercial cows. And uh, we do now start uh, to put eggs in the majority of those cows and we're AI and quite a few of them um, bringing in heifer calves and, and just trying to make the population a little different, uh, a little different scenery around our place than just being bull bred. So um, show cattle and show pigs is uh, something that is near and dear to my heart. Uh, I sell about 70 show calves in the fall and uh, try to sell 20 or 30 more of them in the spring. And so we're selling about 100 calves a year uh, to 4-Hers across the country and um, do that via online sales or uh, just private treaty, um, things like that. And we feed several of them right here uh, in our barn as well. And so um, tonight I come to you uh, as a show ride specialist, but uh, also as a cattle feeder and breeder. And um, I'm, I'm extremely confident in where we're at with our show right products and uh, with the feed that is being made right there uh, with Billy and the crew um, and, and what's happening. And so we've also got uh, some new things as well gonna happen. Uh, we talked about different, uh, little different kinds of feeds today and uh, being able to make some, um, some different kinds of feeds as well. We'll get into why and how that's gonna happen here in just a little bit, but. I certainly appreciate each one of you that have tuned in and I won't try to take all your time this evening. Uh, we'll hopefully be done here in about an hour. And uh, just remember that there is the, the Q&A, the question um, section at the top or wherever it may be on your screen and ask away. Uh, I, I believe that these are uh, meant for that, not just for me talking and reading off some slides, but uh, trying to answer your questions that you may have. And so, Hopefully uh, what we go through is understandable tonight. And if it's not, uh, you are more than welcome to get a hold of me at any point. My number's on the, the uh, ShowRite website. Um, and uh, you, you're more than welcome to get on there anytime. Uh, check that out. We've got some cool merchandise for sale. Uh, those of you that feed uh, ShowRite feeds or um, feed, feed through Billy and his crew there, uh, there is uh, opportunity for you as well on the website, there's something called Spotlight Rewards that you can get on and um, enter your success and uh, we'll send you some merchandise. So uh, make sure you do keep that in mind as well. So I uh, appreciate each one of you and uh, we'll get started here. <clears throat> so I do a, a lot of clinics to, across the country and uh, most of them involve being now involving uh, a computer screen, which I'm not probably the most fond of, but it does allow me to be uh, wherever 
in the country at any given time. And so uh, that is part of it. And obviously the silly uh, or, or uh, the hard uh, things that are happening now in our uh, country has not probably allowed us to just get out and uh, beat the footpath that we usually do. And so we do a lot of these uh, via this type of format now uh, through Zoom. And so try to be pretty self-explanatory through each one of these, but I know that sometimes it maybe is a challenge. I'm not right there in front of you. And so, like I said, the question and the answers are really big. Uh, so what I always like to talk about in multiple species of livestock, particularly in cattle, uh, you know, so many times I get questions throughout uh, throughout the year of feeding cattle, no matter where you're at in your routine at this particular point or at this given time. Um, you know, I know many of you have had your calves here for a while and, and uh, you're getting them ready for different shows and maybe you're slowing them down and getting ready to uh, maybe get them ready for a uh, July, August, whatever your fair is. And uh, so there's different transition points. But, you know, I get a lot of times in, in how we're feeding cattle today and how do you become more successful as a family? It's not just about buying a high priced animal and uh, putting that thing in a pen and then thinking you're going to go win. Uh, it's, it's not even close to that at this particular point. You have to be a good feeder for sure. And we're going to talk about good feed and, and those skills here in just a minute. But your management uh, has got to be A1. And you have to be on top of it every single day from the time that that calf arrives at your house to the time that you're done showing it if you want to be the most competitive. So I always get the question, how do we become better? And, you know, it, is it feed? How can we feed better? Is it genetics? And does it matter? Nutrition and genetics are the two most important things to having a good foundation of a starting of, of a good calf. And uh, so most of you have already picked your genetics and your calf for the year. I am going to go through some slides just describing kind of where we're at and where, where we were years before and uh, just some neat things just to look at as we get kind of started here. But both those things are very crucial uh, for success throughout the year. <clears throat> so I uh, got a little funny, but first uh, let's take a selfie. No, uh, let's take a look back in time. So 1960s, uh, you know, uh, we look at cattle and just the way that they were presented. These are show steers. As you can look right there in the middle, the Houston Livestock Show and Rodeo is currently going on. And if you get a chance to look up the champion steer at the 2021 Houston Livestock Show and Rodeo, it does not look anything like the calf does right there in the middle of your screen. But this was three very unique animals for their time. And uh, there's a bull down here on the, the bottom left-hand side. And what's unique about that bull is he was right there in front of you, the champion Angus bull at the International in 1964. And he was thought and sought after as one of the most popular and best built cattle that was ever made. Never thought that they would get him any better than that. In 1969, the late 60s, you're going to look at uh, hip height, you know, where these folks are standing back behind them and where they're at now, and just how much taller this particular calf is right here. This is when we started to put a little bit more frame into cattle. This was a steer called Conoco. Conoco was exhibited at the International and was a pivotal point in the beef industry. He was a Charlet cross, okay? He was the first of his kind to ever be selected as a grand champion. He was a Charlet crossbred. So he was just a Charlet crossed with an Angus. And uh, that guy there was extremely popular. And you can look back in, in many record books and you, they'll tell you about Conoco and just how important that he was. They didn't know him at that point. He was just a really unique calf but they didn't know that he would be a turn of where we were going to start to go. In the 1970s, we kept frame in check and uh, body, obviously, as you look, we talk a lot about body today. And as you look at uh, these guys uh, through their body, they certainly don't have much and they're kind of straight in their legs, but that was important. They wanted level tops. They wanted shallower bodies and they wanted them longer for sure and taller. 
Look at this guy standing back here behind with the cowboy hat on. This calf's hip is up to his shoulders. Those calves that we had to start, look where they're at. They're at their waist. It's pretty intriguing to move 10 years and to see cattle transition that far. We just kept making them taller, though, in the 1980s. I mean, look how silly that those look. 1980s, you've got a calf over here, this brockle face calf, and look how he looks uh, over to the left. You can't even see the young lady that's there behind the, what I would anticipate is probably the American Royal Queen at that point, her and uh, her friend, uh, and maybe some buyers here. You can't even see it. You can barely see the showman over here with the white calf. And then obviously you got a smaller cat, you got a smaller, lighter weight calf right here, 1988. So the late 80s just continued to bring some frame styles to them. The 90s, uh, we kept some frame, we kept some length of body, and we really wanted level tops. We started to work on some body, started to get them a little softer in their rib. The early 2000s, we really started to work to try to get some more body. They're the same length. They're maybe shortening up just a bit in terms of hip height, not very much. But we're really starting to work on let's feed them harder. Let's get them a little softer in the rib. And, hey, uh, they also started to like some more air on them, and they started to fit these steers a little bit tighter. And now we're looking at the 19 or 2019 and beyond, and these are three calves that, to me, are kind of the epitome of where you're at from a steer show standpoint. Uh, you know, big, fluffy-haired cattle, but look where they're at now. We're back in terms of moderation. Of where we were in the 60s we're in terms of length of body where we were in the 80s and we have softened them up we've made them bigger bone and we've made them sounder on their feet and legs and so i think it's just really important to see those cattle and kind of where we've transitioned if you're thinking about where we're at today versus where we were before those are some unique things to think about and if you ever get a chance look some of those up uh the anconian president that angus bull and uh, Conoco, the big silver calf, look those up and, and uh, read a little history on show calves and kind of where we've been. So a lot of things have changed from the 60s until now, except for one very, very important yet extremely simple part of the puzzle, corn. Corn has never changed and corn in a diet has never changed. It uh, doesn't matter what we start to put in there to influence body or what we start to put in there to influence muscle or anything. The one thing that is certain in the 1960s until the 2020s, corn is the most important part of a calf's diet. It means today the most of where we're trying to be in terms of just getting them to be fatter or getting them to be cleaner and leaner. And uh, it's now very important in how you feed that corn and how much uh, you need. So what else today is in your feed besides corn? You know, it used to be really simple. And now uh, we start to add more stuff in. There's fibers in there, like your cottonseed holes, your cottonseed pellets. Uh, we talk about ripe fiber, which is a corn cob base. And I'll get into that in just a minute. Molasses to make it a little sweeter, keep some dust down. Vitamins and minerals. I, I want you to understand how important this is and how important this is in the rations that uh, Billy and these folks are making you to be able to feed to your calf every day. Vitamins and minerals are two easy words to spit out. And we all know that they're in feeds, but a successful feed has a good vitamin and mineral pack. And we'll talk about those proteins. We get proteins from many different sources and they're in there. And what about added fat? You know, we add fat depending on when we need it and when we don't need it. And uh, there usually is fat, though, in your feed. So that's easy. You know, a diet, it's got corn, fiber, fat. Now what? You know, uh, I've always talked about um, how calves are so different. And, and, and feeding livestock is so different than the way that it used to be. You know, today we feed um, for the animal. Five, six years ago, three, four years ago, 10 years ago, whenever it was, we fed to get the heaviest animal. We tried to max them out and we tried to get them as big as we possibly could. We got them from 1350 to 1450. And hey, that's whenever we were starting to win some stuff. That's whenever you knew you were going to have a banner. If your calf was pushing 1400 five, six years ago, you probably had a pretty good chance of winning the show. 
Today, it's much different because of the level of competition and trying to get animals fed. And there's so many good feeders and fitters and all those things out there and breeders. You're trying to now just maximize the potential of that calf. You may have a moderate calf. I've always, uh, I've always gave uh, this example. If a Ford Ranger is driving down the road, you never notice it. It's just another Ford Ranger, right? Everything's complete to it. It's got the tires that match. It's got the mirrors that match. It's got the windows that match and the bed matches and everything matches. If you take that same Ford truck, that same Ford Ranger, and you jack it way up and you put you some big semi-truck tires underneath there, and then it drives down the road, it looks unproportional. You got to laugh at that guy. I'm, I'm hoping that nobody on here, um, our participants tonight, have a Ford Ranger that's jacked up with semi tires. But if you do, that's cool too. I'd ride in it. But if not, I think that if you saw the first Ford Ranger drive by, you'd think nothing of it. If you see the next Ford Ranger drive by, you'd think, well, that looks pretty silly. Well, that's what we're trying to get the point across in livestock and feeding them today. You don't want them to look silly. So if you got a real moderate calf, we're not trying to get that specific calf to 1,400 pounds because he's going to look short and dumpy. He'll look fat. But if he's moderate, we're going to ease him in terms of his feet. And maybe we need to feed him to just 1,250 pounds. And that's where he looks the best. If you got a tall calf, we're not trying to just make sure that he looks tall and doesn't have any body. We need to soften him up. And we need to try to put some body on him to even his frame size out. And to make him look more proportional to his frame, unlike the big tires on the Ford Ranger. We just want the Ranger to drive by and nobody notice it. But everybody think, hey, it's cleaned up, nice truck. The other guy, big tires, a little weird. So what kind of calf are you feeding? You know, there's three different kinds I talk about every day. There's a green, there's easy doing, there's hard. And there is a fourth kind, and that's uh the, the unicorn, that's the one that is hard to find. And so a lot of times these three particular kinds right here are what we're looking at whenever we're going out and finding those calves. Now, whenever we see the one we like, that's usually the unicorn, right? But then uh, you get him back home and you're like, man, he needs a little body or she needs some body or she's a little green or he's a little green or maybe they're real soft made and, and, and they need to be a little harder in terms of their muscle. But then you've got hard a tight rib and a shallow body. And, and I'll talk about these, but these are the three kinds of cattle that you're going to see the majority of. That one is just simply a unicorn. So green, skinny, late maturing. So <clears throat> right here, uh, this heifer has got a real long neck. She's good neck and uh, she's good in terms of her body. Okay. I'm going to talk about the sweep to the rib, but you can start to see that this heifer is starting to get a little sweep down here to a rib. All right, not a whole bunch. It's not way down here. We're going to try to get this in her. But this heifer right here is green, and easy doing, or excuse me, late maturing, kind of skinnier yet. You know, this looks like she's going to get it, but doesn't quite have it yet. How do we feed that kind? And I would anticipate a lot of you probably have cattle that look like this. So how do you feed that kind? <clears throat> there's different ways, but I, I like to be at a mid-range energy in fiber, kind of let them grow and let them maintain. So my understanding is that two of your main feeds are your heifer feed and your steer feed. What I wanted to tell you about in, in terms of feeding cattle today, I realize that your tag and, and Billy and I have talked about this, the tags on the, on the cattle feed say heifer feed or they say a steer feed made by show right or having show right technology inside and they do and each one of these feeds we have something called nutribase nutribase is our vitamin and mineral pack okay that i was talking about earlier why does it differ in terms of other vitamin and mineral packs or in terms of other base mixes because we have focused so much time and effort on gut health immunity for these cattle keeping them on feed and keeping them growing. A lot of times you can make just a real simple mineral pack and put it in there and it's just enough for those cattle to get by. You have got to have a show feed ration today that is more than just enough of getting you by. And that's what you have in show right. And I realize that for some of you, that it may not be the cheapest feed that you can find, okay? But I wanna be honest with you and telling you this and you can't 
don't don't think of me as some uh, young rich guy because I'm not at all. But I have always thought, and I was taught by a guy because I used to try to take as many short turns and as many curves as fast as I could to try to get to that end point. And I was always just lacking something. And it, it ended up being nutrition. You can't pay enough for good nutrition. You've already got that calf in the barn. You're already working on him hard, him or her, or however many you've got. And I understand that, you know, it may look like it's a dollar, two dollars a bag higher than maybe a, a competitor's feed, but the nutrition and what's behind it is the things that you don't see until those cattle prosper, until they look good and they're doing good every day. Okay, that has a lot to do with the environment, but it has a lot to do with the feed that's in front of them. And I can't stress enough, I came to work for Showright because I believed in the feed that I was feeding to our specific animals. I can't stress you enough how important it is for good nutrition. You may find something a little cheaper. You may find something that seems a little better. Call me if you have any questions. But as we get into this, and I talk about this green skinny late mature, which I'm sure many of you have yet, and you're just trying to get some body still on your calf and you want to keep them growing, you maybe need to put a little bit more fat on them. There's this heifer feed and there's steer feed. Don't let the tags confuse you, okay? I know that at times Billy may say, hey, you need to put that heifer on our steer feed. We messed up. We're, me and Billy, I, I'm, I'm going to say that I did as well, okay? We're going we're gonna to hopefully be able to change the tag name so that it doesn't alarm anyone that's viewing tonight of the steer feed or the heifer feed. Because Billy may say, hey, you need to put your heifer on that steer ration to get her a little fatter. Don't just think because it says steer on the ration that it's not something that you can use and it's something that's not for heifers. That's not it at all. Uh, this, you know, was something that was designed to, to feed the steers and to feed the heifers. But now the importance of mix matching feeds and, and doing those things and still trying to keep it simple. It's OK to have your heifer on the steer feed sometimes and your steer on the heifer feed. And I'll tell you why. Like this calf right here that I was just talking about, she needs a little bit more body and she needs to continue to grow and, and just get a little bit softer, okay? I put her on the heifer feed because to me, she's the mid-range calf. She's got all the good pieces. We just need to continue to get her fat enough, continue to put some more body in her. So I like the heifer feed that Billy's got you designed to be able to do that. So the next calf. This is the soft, easy doing. And I want you to go back and, and remember this rib cage, okay? I was pointing this out, the softness of the rib. I'll talk about the sweep here in just a minute, but this particular line right here, okay? Look at it here, okay? Starting to see more body, starting to see more softness, especially in this heifer. You see that big sweepy rib that I'm talking about. Let me get my other little highlighter out here, okay? Starting to see, oh, I did a good job the first time. Right underneath where I got that yellow, there's some sweep to that calf right there, okay? Same thing there, starting to get that soft body. You know how you can tell that they're pretty easy doing too? Right here, their chest form. That's a place that you can study and say, hey, they got a little bit, and, and that's okay. Some of these cattle that are easier doing and easier fleshing, They've got a little bit of chest. And you look up here and maybe they got a little bit of a, a wrinkle there underneath their chin. This isn't all a bad thing. We used to just love them. I mean, love them. Rocket neck, right? Having their neck shoot way up out of the top of their shoulder. And now we're trying to kind of get these cattle where they're a little softer made, but not too soft. How would I feed this kind? I like the heifer feed, okay? The same thing that we were just talking about a little bit ago. This heifer feed, now mind you, this right here, old orange and white right here, okay? Your steer at home, and he, maybe he's moderate. He's shorter bodied. He's got that big soft rib cage in him. We don't really want to get him any fatter and we want to keep him growing, okay? Put him on the heifer feed. We can change the name. If, it, if, it, if it's something that you just, ah, I just can't feed the heifer feed because it says heifer on it. I promise you, you can do it. I promise you, I do it every day. And it works very well. The heifer feed is important. 
to realize that that's going to help you continue to get conditioned. But look right here. Oh, I need to change my color of my highlight. Let's see. I'm going to go blue. That's still not working. Anyway, I'm going to go right across it. Blue, I'm just coloring in. Helps frame growth, okay? So those moderate cattle that you just we we're just talking about, these cattle are a little, a little more moderate, maybe a little more compact in terms of their length of body, okay? I'm going to put them on the heifer feet so I can continue frame growth and continue to add that body that they have. I have something right here called Showrite HF. And this is a particular feed that we can actually make you uh, be able to make with the NutriBase right there, uh, utilizing um, Billy and those guys. They, they can put this together. We have a ration to be able to do this. So if we get too soft, or maybe your steer's getting too big right now, and you're wanting to cut him back just a little bit, but you don't want to add a bunch of additives, I get it. You just want to be on a feed. Show right, the HF, that's a high fiber holding feed. It's low energy, okay? If you ever have, a, if there's any kids on here and you ever have a judge ask you, what is the main source of energy in your calf's feed? It goes all the way back to corn. Okay, corn is energy. They gain energy from a lot of different things, but corn is the main source of energy in a calf's diet. And so I'm going to keep the energy pretty low on these because they're already soft enough. Where here, I'm gonna have the energy maybe just a little bit higher. So the heifer feed works, and then we could also utilize an HF. Maybe some of your steers right now are getting pretty big. You're a little nervous. Hey, my calf's big. Don't tell me it's big unless you know it's big. You gotta have a weight on it for sure. But I do realize that by your eye, you may be looking at a bigger calf than which you started with. But realizing also you may not have seen a lot of cattle. Maybe you only see the one in your barn. And so it just starts looking bigger to you. Make sure that you get a good weight on that calf. And then we know how to more amply uh, or amplify their uh, specific needs in terms of show feed. So we're talking about the soft body ones. We're talking about the steers that maybe, uh, you know, and, and heifers that are a little more moderate and just a little fatter looking. Uh, keep them on the heifer feed or we'll we'll make a ration like HF. Write that down. Um, and uh, we talked about this calf earlier. So we're we're on a we're on the heifer feed on, on a kind like that. This one right here is the hardest to feed. This is the other one I was talking about. The third kind, hard. Okay. Like coloring in the lines right up here in the middle. This is a calf that is very challenging to feed. Why? See its chest floor. And if you, oh, the line's not real straight. If you drew this line pretty well straight back, see its rear body right here, its flanks right up in here, its heart. You hear judges talk about heart and full rib. That's right here. None of that sweeps below this line. Okay. This is going to be a hard calf to feed. Check this out. Look, I'm going to go all the way across, just like I just did there. Check that out. Look at that lower rib cage underneath there. Okay. Going all the way. Oh, some reason you left. You did it on purpose. Oh, I'm not the best at drawing. I'm trying to use my. See that? And that rib cage is softer and underneath that line. Put that line in your head. Go to the, go to the front of your calf, look at their chest floor, and draw that imaginary line all the way across that calf. If they're good standard, get you a little piece of chalk. Think about it. Draw from their chest all the way back. See where the rib's at. That's the easiest way that I know how to feed cattle. I look at their chest floor right here, and then I draw that line all the way back, and I try to see where I'm at in terms of body. That's going to tell me a lot how to feed. Check this out. Chest floor, okay, all the way back. That's the same line that I just drew on those other calves. This calf's harder to feed because we're trying to fill in multiple areas. We're trying to fill in there. I'm gonna change my thing back to yellow. Make it look cooler. We're, we're trying to figure fill in there. We're trying to fill in here, right in this particular area. We're trying to get this belly to sweep down lower. Okay. That's a challenging animal to feed right there. Now, is it prettier neck? Is it maybe a little 
longer bodied, absolutely. But this softness of body means a lot. So how am I going to feed this calf? Remember, these are two heifers. And a lot of times heifers are going to look like this more than steers. Why? I don't know. But it just seems like heifers are a little harder doing some. How do I feed that kind? I'll put them on the steer feed. Okay. Oh, these are heifers. I'm not putting them on the steer feed. Trust me. I, I promise you. Many times, many experience and lots and lots of cattle right there is definitely important. So steer feed for sure. It's going to add that fat cover that you need. Okay. It's going to add that body condition that you need. Can be fed all year long to a calf like that. It's most commonly used, yes, in market cattle and bulls. But what I'm trying to get the point across here is if you have a calf and you draw that line tomorrow or you go back out to feed them tonight or whenever it is, and you draw that line and you say, boy, my calf is skinny and, and needs to have more body and, and needs more flesh, steer feed. Go to that for sure. Is there any questions? I don't know. Let's see. Not yet. If, remember, if you have any questions, go to the Q&A, ask anything, okay? I'm trying not to take a bunch of your time. So there's not a bunch of questions yet. So that makes me feel like I'm doing my job where you guys are just extremely bored and ready for me to be done. <laughs> Let's see. So, you know, I was telling you earlier about the feeds and how important it is and how, how, in my opinion, nutrition costs nothing if it's good. So we have these things and, and, and what you just need to look at and there are fancy words in there, the actogen and the YSAC and the total replacement technology and aspergillus rise. I can't ever say this particular word very good but i'm pretty sure aspergillus arise or rise ao all these things that probably don't mean anything to you are extremely extremely important for a calf's diet particularly today you know i used to think that show feeds were all the same and and i still hear it today and hey i believed it until just a few years ago i believe that even working for show right that 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 a lot of show feeds were the same. Today, they're not the same, not even close, okay? You have got to find that kind of show feed where the folks know what they're talking about, but most importantly, they have the technology behind it that can help boost your calf through the year. Show feeds aren't the same anymore. And if you're spending all that money on that calf and on the bedding and on the trailers and the trucks, and driving and that shows and everything else don't try to cheapen your feet out that's the most important part of the animal other than working on it every day don't try to cheapen your animal up just to say well i saved two dollars because do that by the end of the year if maybe we're two dollars a bag higher or, or there's there's a dollar a bag higher or maybe it's lower i hope i hope it's lower uh i like lower nobody on here i'm sure likes higher but here's the deal Add that up at the end of the year. How many bags of feed is that calf going to eat? Most of the time, whenever I'm a dollar or two dollars higher on a bag of feed, because I have incorporated, that's not getting me up and down the road every day. That's incorporating technologies for you guys to be able to have a successful project. Add that up at the end of the year. Was it a hundred bucks? I've spent a hundred bucks on dumber stuff, I'm sure. Okay. So <laughs> I'm sure maybe some of you have. Maybe not, maybe not. I, I have a tendency to buy dumb stuff. So uh, I, I darn sure have spent $100 on, on dumber stuff. But a lot of times we're, we're 60 to $100. And it's very minute compared to what we are representing as a show feed for show right relative to the contemporaries. So our genetics, and I'm going to be real quick about this. You know, I, I get so many questions and I know that many of you have uh, questions probably as well on uh, you know why why does my calf not eat as much why does my one calf eat more than the other calf why is this calf a little loose why is this calf not getting body why is this calf getting too fat too quick genetics are as important as good nutrition a lot of times I'm going to ask you what kind of calf you have you say club calf I say a little harder doing 
Okay. If you say Angus heifer, Hereford heifer, I'm going to say probably a little easier to do it. If you say uh, Red Angus or Charlet, I'm going to say, hey, we're going to flirt that line of a little harder, maybe a little greener, okay, a little skinnier. So we're back and forth. I got a question. I want to look at it. We feed basic feed at seven bucks a bag. We have three steers, 4-H projects. I think show feed will be too much for us. Is there an additive that might work? I'll, I actually really like that question. Um, I really do. And I appreciate you asking that. So I understand that at $7 a bag, um, you know, you're challenged by feeding, uh, you know, something else that may be more expensive. I, I totally understand that. What I would tell you is, as you talk about additives, and so many feed companies will come to you and say, well, yeah, no, you're fine. $7 a bag, heck yeah, that's cheap. Feed this additive and this additive and this additive, and that'll help boost your calf. And so I'll sit here and tell you that, yes, we, we do have, uh, highly I believe it is. Um, we do have feed additives that can go along with the $7 bag of feed. I'd be grateful. Hey, $7 a bag, that's great. But I promise you that that feed lacking the nutrition that you're going to need to really maximize that calf's end potential. What I'm going to tell you, though, is they're probably still going to grow and gain. And I realize that because corn is still in the ration. And just like I said earlier, corn's important. That will stay in that ration. But as you begin to start to feed additives to boost that cheaper feed, all of a sudden you're back to a $10, $12 bag of feed again. So just make sure that you do think about that. Hey, $7 is cheap, but whenever you got to feed a bunch of additives with it, then I would darn sure make sure that you stay on the product uh, as far as additives go. I would make sure that you have the right stuff in there. Can you mix different feeds? I see, Eileen, you, you get it from Delmarva. That's good. That's, that is perfect. Love it. Uh, they're making good feed. If we need to try to utilize some additives to boost and get to where you need to be, Billy can add in if he needs to. I'm not sure what exactly feed that you're on, the basic feed, but uh, you know, I, I'm just anticipating um, that uh, you know you need some additives to kind of boost up some muscle and, and condition and enhance those things. Elizabeth asks, can you mix different feeds? Yes, you can. Elizabeth, but what I would tell you is that it's probably pretty important to stay on the kind of ration that you're on, okay? Um, you can mix feed and, and feed additives. You can take the feed, say you need to be in between, and say you have uh, your heifer feed that Delmarva is uh, producing, and, and you have the steer feed, and you're feeding two calves, one calf's getting heifer feed, one calf's getting steer feed, and you got that calf right in the middle that needs a little steer feed, but maybe needs a little bit of the, uh, the heifer feed. You're okay there because all the basic nutrients are still very much similar. There's just a difference in corn. I wouldn't recommend just trying to utilize two or three different types of feeds as far as companies go, because we all make them just a little bit different. Uh, like I said, it used to be very similar. Today, it's not quite as similar. So, you know, Elizabeth, it's really going, going to depend on your calf. And I'll tell you, like I said, my numbers on the show right Facebook or on the show right website, you snag it off there. You can text me a picture of your calf or send me a video or call me anytime and I'll help you feed that calf for sure. And that goes for anybody that's on there. Uh, you know, don't ever think that I'm just on here just for uh, a 45 minute hour long segment. And this is the last time you're going to see me. You can see me as much as you possibly want. I can't be out there where you live all the time because, like I said, I'm in southern Illinois where it's raining and, and blowing so stinking hard right now. But uh, I can darn sure be there via phone. And that's what's good about multimedia today. Our genetics is important as nutrition. And uh, oh, got one more. You bet, Riley. <clears throat> Uh, for sure. Um, genetics can waver uh, feed intake, for sure. And, and, you know, I get so many times folks call and they're like, well, my cat's not eating your feed. And, you know, he, he was eating good for 20 days and he's just not eating right now. 
I understand there, there is times where feed is the problem, but there is many times that it's not. A lot of times it has to do with environment and a lot of times it has to do with genetics. And I fed all different shapes and sizes of them, all different breeds, all different kinds, all different genetics. And uh, not everything, but many of them, I, I assure you that. And it can waver feed intake. I have Hereford heifers and steers that will swallow feed like it's just a little bit of water right in front of them. And I've got Charlay cattle or Charlay influence cattle or, or club calf show steers where I can put the same bag of feed right in front of them and they'll just stare at it, okay? And I'm sure that some of you probably laugh because you've had that as well. But that is something to know that uh, not only is, is, is nutrition important, but genetics really take over in, in how feed intake is. And it, it can allow them to grow faster or slower. Frame size, uh, you know, is it fed or bred? You know, we use, I was talking earlier about feeds and, and how you needed to stay, maybe if your calf's real moderate, you needed to stay on the heifer feed because it would help grow that calf's frame. And that is true, okay? Because there's a little less limited energy. There's less corn in that diet. Corn's gonna just start to get them to get wider. Wider, 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 softer, softer, softer. Fiber helps the cattle grow just a little bit, okay? And so with the limited corn in there, that helps frame size. But a lot of times, frame size is fed. You may have bought a calf that you thought was going to be a tall, long body calf. And all of a sudden, you're sitting in July and you're like, where did all of its frame go? It's really moderate now. And, and that has nothing to do with feed. Those are genetics. And that's why it's a big factor. And it can also factor in a calf's condition. Where are they at in terms of being fat? Like I said, Herford heifers, if you've ever fed one or an Angus heifer or Gelby or, you know, and I'm not picking on them at all, but they'll get fat quick, okay? And, and some of the Charlays and some of the club calves and the more market cattle, boy, they don't get fat quite as quick. And then maybe, maybe uh, you know, that has something to do with the feed, but a lot of times it has to do with gen the genetics. I got another question. Uh, good. Um, this one's from an anonymous attendee. It says, what is a good hay to feed them? This is a great question. And while you guys are, are uh, still on and participating, hay is so very important for feed intake as well. And I was going to go into it here in just a minute, but while the question's asked and it's out there, I want to make sure that I answer it. So hay is good. And I like stimmy grass hay. A lot like to, you know, use a little alfalfa mix or they like you know, they try to put some real green alfalfa. That, that doesn't work for these cattle. It's actually too hot for them. And so I would tell you, be it a grass hay. The stimmier, the better. It may not look luxurious to you and like something you'd want to chomp on, but these cattle actually like it pretty good, okay? And yes, they like some clover in there and stuff. And, and there is times, I get it, 25% of your ration may be that in a, in a hay diet, whatever. Maybe you make your own hay and then has some of that in there but watch how much you do it. Why? Because it's hot on that calf's gut. And then they get the loose poops, okay? And we don't want that. And whenever they're doing that, it's actually a stressful time and they're not actually converting as good as they need to. Stimmy grass hay is, uh, you know, I, I don't know how to describe it. I guess it would be like whenever your plate is dirty. You know, you get done eating at night and your plate's dirty. Well, you take the water and you spray that plate off or you put it in the dishwasher and it comes out clean, right? So whenever cattle eat this grass hay, whenever they get, whenever they eat, they eat their show ride feed, they eat their feed that you're getting from Delmarva, and it's in their systems. It's still chunked up through their belly, okay? It's on the sidewalls, it's in their gut, and there's some of that still left. You know, didn't get all the ketchup off the plate, didn't get all the crumbs picked up. It's still left on the plate until we wash it off. We don't just take a hose and wash off the inside of the calf. We take hay and we do that. So make sure that you're feeding grass hay. How much grass hay? I like to give them what they want to eat, okay? I don't mind taking the majority of these cattle and keeping them on free choice grass hay because it keeps their bellies really sanitized. It keeps them more comfortable. And honestly, they may eat quite a bit of hay, but they'll eat just that much more grain whenever they do it. 
great question. So we're going to get away from feed just a little bit. And, and this isn't going to take real long because I like to be upfront and I like to be very uh, hopefully understandable about how important these small things are. Water. Water makes up 80% of an animal's muscle, okay? It's not just the body and the physical fill of that animal that it's important for water. It's for their muscle and it's for their growth, just like us. Why do nutritionists and people say you need to drink a gallon of water a day or more water than you do anything else? Because it helps you grow, it keeps you vibrant, it keeps you alert, comfortable, and I don't like water, okay? So I have challenged myself every day to drink it. Now, you're not popping open a bunch of Mountain Dews and Sprites and Sunny D's and whatever else and feeding these calves. We're feeding them water every day or we're, we're giving them water to drink every single day. Make sure that that water is clean. If you look at that calf's trough or you look or trough, or you look at the, the pan that you're watering them out of or anything, or you look at, uh, you have a self, uh, you know, a, a waterer out there uh, that is constant flow, make sure it's all clean. If you wouldn't drink that water, that calf does not need to be drinking that water. If you go out and you fill the, the tub up, the, the trough, and you're like, man, there's some nasty stuff down in there. There's some grass and there's some hay and there's some feed and it looks green. Do not let your cattle drink that, okay? Now, will they drink it? Absolutely, because that's the only thing they have to drink. Watch how much. If you took a dirty trough and you took a clean one and you set them next to each other with the same amount of water, watch how much clean water they drink compared to the dirty. Make sure it's in there. Fresh feed. You know why I like Delmarva and being able to get feed from them is because it's made right there, okay? Comes right out of their place. They are able to make fresh feed time after time. And that is so important in, in cattle, okay? You may get feeds in and they come from different parts of the country and whatever else. It's got the fresh looking cool bag and everything and blah, 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 blah. That means nothing to that calf. The, the, what's on the front of that means nothing. It's what's inside of that bag. And what Delmarva has the opportunity to do for you is to be able to make feed that your cattle can thrive from. It's the same stuff that we put in our pink show right bags and we push across the nation. They make it with the, what we called the Nutribase earlier. That's the base mix, the vitamin and mineral pack. And it's so very important. Delmarva makes the exact same feed as what goes in the pink show right bag. It's all show right technology. It's stuff that they never made up. We helped them make that. And so just know that as you go. We talked about grass hay and, and roughage, grass hay or clover. I like grass hay, stemmy grass hay, vitamins and minerals. We talked about that being in there. Have a good relationship with your vet. Don't try to be one yourself, okay? Um, I've tried to be a vet many a times and it always has worked to my disadvantage. Wormers, here's something very important. And I know you've heard this in multiple species. Can't tell you how important worming your calf is. I worm our show calves every 30 days. Okay, there's a fed, there's a foron, there's an injectable, there's a paste, there's all different kinds. And I know you'll ask me, or you're going to wonder, well, what do you use? We've used them all. Honestly, whenever we're showing them, I don't like using the foron because I don't want to burn up their top or their hair. You know, I'm always just scared that maybe they're going to spit a little bit of hair out once I put that liquid on top of them. Most of the time they don't, but I'm always a little bit nervous about that. The injectable, I like it whenever they're young, but whenever you're starting to show them, sometimes it can leave a little bit of a knot for a few days. If you're getting ready to go to a show, say you, your, your schedule tells you to do it on Friday and you're going to go to a show Saturday morning, you don't want that little knot. It doesn't always do that, but it could. So I'm just okay on the injectable as they get bigger. I like actually feeding it. There's pelleted warmer that you can feed, and then there's a paste. I really like the paste too. And uh, there's all different kinds, you know, they're, they're made by different companies. Um, just know that timing's important and warming them is important. Do it every 30 days, put it on your schedule, put it on your calendar and let yourself be reminded that it needs to happen. If those worms get inside those animals and you're 60, 70 days away, 
you know, I get calls all the time. Well, my calf's eating 30 pounds a day, but it's not gaining anything. Have you wormed it lately? Well, I wormed it whenever I got it. Well, that's a huge issue. That calf needs wormed again because all those worms are doing is eating up all that good nutrition and they're just growing inside that calf. And uh, it'd be nasty to see what may be inside of there after those worms continue to grow and thrive off the good nutrition that you're trying to feed. If you're not worming, you might as well not feed them anything because those worms are going to continue to get that feed and nutrients and they're going to continue to grow, not your calf. Huge right here. Management and care. Okay. Make it a routine. Oh, I got a question. I want to go up there and make sure. I'll see. Uh, good question. Does the vet check stools for worms? You know, they can. Uh, but it's something that's uh it, it's not gonna happen all the time. Okay. Um I would darn sure tell you that whenever you talk to your vet, they're gonna say, hey, worm your calf. No matter what animal you, you show, maybe you don't just show cattle. Let me just let you in on a little secret of success. Worm them every 30 days, okay? No matter what you're showing, I promise you, I've had so many cattle, so many animals that we've ever fed across the country. Five, six days later, look completely different than they did after they wormed them because they're getting out and killing all those worms and they're being able to utilize the nutrients that we're trying to put in them. We're trying to add body. Worms are eating it, okay? I mean, they're not getting big bellied, whatever else inside of there. They look like a little baby show calf, but they're darn sure growing from it. And so you need to remember that. It's a routine, worming is, but so is everything else. As we get to some general management and care here quick, make sure it's a routine. Keep this in your mind. Once you start, never stop. One of the biggest things that I'll tell you is whenever you get that calf home and you get them in the pen, as clean as that pin is that day or that stall that you have that animal in, it needs to be that clean the rest of the time that you have that calf. If you wouldn't wanna go in and lay down and sleep in that mess, then you don't need to have your calf. And I don't care on here how competitive you're wanting to be. There's nobody on here of participants that's probably saying, well, I'm cool with getting beat. I wanna to go to the fair and, and lose. Nobody says that, okay? If you are, you're a you are just an extremely nice person and you are simply just feeding the calf and going to the show and that's great but i promise you or i not guarantee you i'll put the money on it i'm not good at vegas but I'm not good at poker or anything but i am probably a betting man on this that none of you want to lose okay or or look dumb out there so once you start never stop don't let those calves lay in slop don't do it because those are stressful times and that's time that you're losing on gain and feed intake and keeping them comfortable. Understand your projects. You know, understanding their faults is very critical. And I know that it's challenging to know, well, what's good and what's bad. And, and so many of us sit in and we're like, we have the best calf ever. Okay. We have the best pig, sheep, goat, whatever. I get that. I'm the same way. We call that barn blind, <laughs> but it is one of those things that understanding the, the critical areas and, and the faults of your project, does that steer need more butt? Does that heifer need to be better behind her shoulder? Maybe it's okay, you know, you're like, yeah, once she stands like this, it looks a little better. Those faults are critical for you because that's what we want to feed and try to get better at home before the judge sees it. I know many of us get to a show, we try to just listen to the judge because that's the only opportunity that you have to try to figure out if that calf is good enough or not and where it needs to be changed. That's where I come in, okay? I take that place before you get to the show and we just try to maximize their potential before you get there. That's where my phone number is available on show ride again, like I've said multiple times on the, on the uh, website and you can send me pictures, videos, whatever your calf all the time. Don't switch feeds constantly. I know that we had somebody ask that earlier. And this isn't a negative thing, but this is just me telling you, I want you to keep it routine and, and not switch the feeds just constantly and keep it simple. This isn't rocket science. So make sure that in your mind, you know what you're wanting to do. Maybe you've talked to me, maybe you've talked to Billy or Dennis Wilbur, or whoever may be out there and be able to help you. Keep it very simple though. Like I said, it's not rocket science. 
We're not trying to do anything out of the extreme or the ordinary. We do have a great feed and a bag that allows you to keep things simple. And it's made right there at Del Mar. Got another question I'm gonna look at. Elizabeth, what are signs that your cow has worms again? Uh, you know, there's there's different signs, Elizabeth. I mean, a lot of times it's like you're feeding them a bunch and they're not changing uh, would be one of them. Um, eyelids are white. Uh, gums are a little white. You know, there's no, there's some discoloration there. And, uh, you know, it's just some minute signs. But you just know, you know, you're not going to have a, an issue with worms if you do it every 30 days. You'll, you'll have no issue with worms. If you're like, like, hey, I haven't worm mine for a while, I'd recommend trying to figure out tomorrow where you can get some. <clears throat> so extras in my barn. What do I have that, uh, you know, from a feeding standpoint that's extra? Uh, muscle in motion, I like that. It's going to add in muscle. It's going to fill in behind their shoulder. Uh, we talked about right fiber, and uh, that's a corn cob base. I do want you to, to, to also know that, uh, you know, I know that corn cob is very important. You know, and, and it seems like it is to many different diets today. Uh, I would tell you that corn cob is not as important as what uh, it may be drug on to be, okay? Um, it is a, another character of uh, fiber is what it is and, and just adding body. And it's great, but it was something that was new and it was being put into show feeds and it was just new, so everybody was using it. But you can use cottonseed holes. You can use cottonseed pellets. You can use oats, barley. You can use those things to do the exact same stuff, okay? So not having corn cob in there is not the end of the world, I promise. If you've got cottonseed holes and cottonseed pellets or uh, soy holes or anything like that, you're doing the same stuff as you would with, cotton, with, uh, with corn cob. Why do I like right fiber? It's just an added top dress. Uh, I feed three to four pounds of it of feeding. It allows them to get some more milk. Stretch does the same thing. Right fiber is going to drop the body. Stretch is going to shape and expand their body. Glucose, I know some of you have used it. Uh, it's an added fat source as well. Um, it does help them with the intake of, of feed, but uh, it puts a nice layer of fat over the rib. But hey, here's something simple to know as well. Barley does uh, a very good job of adding fat and actually adding some top shaped muscle. Barley puts on a harder fat, <clears throat> a rolled barley, so you could use that for some extra body. Uh, swell, swell is something that I would recommend that you go and uh, you check out the website and you just look on the, on the swell and uh, look that up on our website and see how that's used. There's, uh, there's YouTube videos on all these things on there. And uh, swell is an important show day project or uh, component for us, but uh, I would check it out on the website. So write down swell and check that out. So uh, frequently asked questions. How much should I be feeding my calf daily? You know, right now, it's just totally going to depend on what kind of calf you've got uh, as far as frame size and body. And that's where, again, I come in and you can ask me at any given time, um, any day, any time of the week, whatever. How much hay? We talked about that. I like to keep them on free choice or at least give them three or four good flakes of it. What do you do if your calf bloats? I, I, this is something that, you know, is a big thing. I mean, we're, we're starting to push cattle on feed a little harder. Some of these cattle bloat. You need to get a hold of your vet. Um, your vet will be able to help you there. We do feed some mineral oil on top of the feed or we drench them with some mineral oil. Mineral oil. Sorry, I'm making that like one word. <laughs> and a uh, little Southern Illinois coming out. So you could feed some mineral oil. Uh, that'll help. You don't have to do that every day. Just if your calf has some bloat, if you're not sure, you know, it, it's, you're, you're going to be able to tell. Uh, one side of their body really swells up compared to the other side, and it's up high. It's not down low. So from the middle part of their body down, it's not there. It's way up high. Um, your, uh, your vet would be able to help you out the best with that. What do you do if your calf goes off feed? Uh, you know, don't just be alarmed that it's the feed. You know, I was telling you earlier, make sure the environment's good. Make sure the pin's clean. Make sure that calf's eyes and nose isn't watery. 
there's no snot coming out of its nose. It doesn't have its mouth open, kind of tongue out, trying to breathe hard. Uh, a lot of times it's environment and it's the calf just not feeling good. So, you know, uh, I know many of you right now, it's still cool outside and, and you're going to turn into the heat here at some point. Make sure you keep those uh, calves under fans if you can. You don't have to have a big fancy cooler. I mean, we, we some families I sell to have them, some don't. Uh, you know, and the hair is important and talk about that here in just a second, but make sure you have some uh, airflow on them whenever it gets humid out or it gets hot. That will kick them off feed faster than anything whenever it gets hot. Uh, they don't want to eat. It's just like us. We don't want to eat whenever it's hot. Management. Wash, 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 wash. Okay. Uh, rinsing is a big thing. And I, 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 I like rinsing. Um, it allows me to help break the cattle. It allows me to get a stick on the cattle, tie them up. I soap them at least two times a week, two to three times. Why don't I do it all the time? Because soap actually dries their hide out, okay? So it is something that you want to maybe just do that twice a week, two, three times a week. But I'm talking these kids that are showing here are washing these calves six times. You know, they're doing it every day. That's as they're getting basically from May on and as they have – uh, as they're going right now, it's a couple times a week, but as they're getting home from school, uh, summer, you know, summer begins to start from May on, they're, they're washing them at least uh, four to six times a week. So do keep that in mind. I mean, it's very important. And then put them on your fans. Let that hair grow. We've got a question. Oh, Elizabeth, I would tell you that um, that'd be a great, that'd be a big question for your vet. Uh, heifers do any day. Uh, is there a way to know that she's close? You know, I would tell you that I would, I would darn sure get a hold of the vet, um, you know, outside of uh, feed and stuff here. You're just, it's one of those things that you'll be able to watch and see if that heifer's starting to just act a little, little different than she does. Um, she will act different whenever she's ready to start calf. Make sure your calf's, your vet's on hand, though. Uh, I'll tell you, I've, I've calved out a lot of heifer calves, and um, sometimes you need a little help in hand to get that first calf out of your heifer. So uh, breaking them. There's many ways, many different ways of breaking cattle. Some of you have probably had your calf for five or six months now, and you're still trying to get it broke. I get it, man. I, I'm, I'm there. I'm the same way. We're taking cattle to shows right now, and I'm just like, when is this calf ever just going to act right? Sometimes it never happens, but sometimes it does. It just takes a lot of time and a lot of effort. You know, don't just think that it's going to be perfect every day. If that calf goes out and leads and sets up and does everything right the first time, give it a big old hug and kiss and tell it to tell its friends to do the same thing. That doesn't happen all the time. So, uh, you know, breaking them is a routine. It's an everyday thing. Get them out there. Get them on a halter. Get them comfortable with you. Get them comfortable with a show stick. Get the stick on them. Start to scratch them with the stick. Start to move their feet around. You know, I always tell the kids that show for me here at home, whenever you get those calves out in the yard, it's not time to just let them slouch. This is a time to get them to stick and set their feet the way that they need to. Every time that that calf's standing and you have it on a halter, you need to set them up like you'd be showing because they need to know that in their mind. So then whenever you go to the ring, that calf just basically walks right into it and they already set themselves up and there's not a lot of sticking to be done. So do that at home. I let them tie, uh, whenever we tie them up, their head's not way cranked up. Don't, don't get their head so far up that, you know, it looks like it's stretching their neck out. You want to give them just a little bit of slack. I let them stand for one to two hours while I'm working on them. Think about it. You know, if you're, if you're out there and you're just letting them stand for five or 10 minutes, that's much less time than a show is. You want them to stand for at least a good hour to two hours. I like them standing for two hours a day. Whenever I'm starting to work on them, there's no reason that those cattle shouldn't stand for about two hours a day. It gets them to be more comfortable and it gets them to set up right. Worm them. Told you that earlier. I think that's very, very, very important. Hair and hide care. Uh, prolate. Prolate is going to... Uh, you know, look it up at a farm store. Look up prolate. Write this down. Look that uh, up. Google it tonight. 
prolate is something that's going to kind of get rid of some lice and, and, you know, bugs that are crawling on those calves' hides. And you may not even be able to see it. Some of your cattle's hair may become patchy right now. And you're like, I don't understand why it's doing that. Well, sometimes it is because your calf's shucking its hair. It's that time of the year because the weather's starting to change so much. But a lot of times it's because they have lice. And uh, so you want to make sure that you get prolate. And I actually do that every 30 days as well. I, I spray it on them. Uh, and then I end up rinsing out there just a little bit after. <clears throat> but prolate will help kill all that. For hair, after I get done blowing them out and getting their hair all blown forward and pretty, I'll take a pump sprayer. I take one third MTG. So write down MTG. Uh, Google that and it'll tell you what that is. That's really good for their hide. I take one third laser sheen or any kind of an oil, uh, like for cattle, uh, not motor oil. <laughs> any kind of a, any kind of some, you know, some kind of a sheen. I like laser sheen. You can get that in as well. And then I put in the rest of that pump spray, I put water in there. I shake it up real good and I mist it on those cattle. I comb it in there, okay? Comb all that through their hair just to make that hair pop, and make it look good, and make, it, make it feel good, make it look like it has a little bit of a shine to it. And then blow. Blow in the hair, blow all their hair forward. It's easier to clip later. It's easier to look at. Blow all of their hair forward whenever you can. <clears throat> whenever you're washing make sure they're dry you know it should take a solid 30 to 40 minutes to dry a calf maybe some of you are sitting here right now and you're like i can dry my calf in 15 minutes your calf's probably not dry okay blow on it for 30 to 40 minutes get it completely dry there's nothing worse than kicking it's just like yourself you're not going to want to get straight out of the shower and run outside whenever it's snowing out or whenever it's extremely hot you know, you, you don't want that water all over you and, the, and that feel. Because once that water continues to set on their hide, particularly on a warm day, that's whenever you start losing their hair. That's whenever you start having issues with these cattle eating and gaining and growing. And it can all be from just simply washing them and not getting them blown out. Good. It sets down in there, and it's just like a, uh, if there's any ladies on here, and you listen, it's like if your hair was wet and you went out 90 degree weather, okay? Um, I don't know what the weather's always like where you're from, but it gets hot down here and humid. <clears throat> it can get hot and it gets your head hot. And you don't feel good. You don't want to do anything. You just want to get it dry. Cattle are the same way. They want it to be dry. So if you're going to do it to them, you need to help them out and get them dry. So <clears throat> I've tried to keep it, you know, relatively basic, like I said, and, and I want you to know how important the, things that we've talked about and i realize you're like hey i've blown out my calf i wash a couple times a week you know there's little things like the prolate and there's tips on the breaking you know and definitely worming it. And some of these grass hay things that hopefully you can take away and you understand how important it is you understand how important good nutrition is i can't stress to you enough just how much it means whenever you feed a good calf good feed and you take good care of those three things right there are, to me, the stair steps of success. You know, everybody always asks me, well, what's the secrets? We need to know the secrets because these guys are doing something that we're not doing. Those that are always winning are taking the time to do these things step by step, and it's a routine, okay? There's more of a routine there, and there's more work ethic put into it than some of you may ever know. And if you want to be successful, if you just take these minute tips that I've given you tonight, I promise you, you're going to get a lot closer. It is tough to win the fair. I don't care where you're at, what county you're in, what state you're in, nothing. It is tough to win a fair. doesn't matter the species. It used to be pretty easy. If you had a pretty nice calf, you'd probably win the show. Anymore, there's four, five, six, 10, 20 good calves in the show, and it's tough. A lot of times you think it's the judge or you think it's, you know, this or this guy has this in or this guy spent a whole bunch of money on his calf. So he's going to win no matter what. I'm telling you, get you a good calf with good genetics, feed it good feed and work on it real, real hard. And you're going to be as close as you have been many, many years. It's a challenge, uh, but it darn sure 
it is worth the challenge at the end of the year. You may not win. And what I've always taken away from showing over the years of my life of being in competition, showing cattle, or selling them to be competitive. A lot of the families that I sell cattle to, uh, some have success and some don't. <clears throat> some seem so lucky that they have success every single weekend we go. And some families don't. And it, sometimes it has nothing to do with their calf or their work ethic. It's just maybe that that's just the luck of the draw that day. And there was better cattle in their class. You know, it's so tough. But if you want to deem your success this year, 2021, on your show calf or any project that you have, you want to deem success, don't just do it by if you won the fair or not. Do it by if you did better every day. You clean that calf stall. You cleaned its pin out. You gave it good grass hay. You gave it good feed. You continue to keep clean water in front of it, and you did what you knew was right to do. Every day you worked on it whenever you got home in the summer and, and home at night from school, and you did all those things. That's success. And so I want you to keep that in mind as you move forward through the summer. With that being said, uh, I appreciate each one of you a whole bunch. I appreciate Billy and uh, the Delmarva crew uh, and everything that uh, they're doing to help you be successful. It may not seem like it, but their time and their effort that they're putting into the feeds for you guys is so very, very important. And uh, they're a really good asset to have on your team. You need a team and uh, you need people that can help you. And those guys sure can. And I'm darn sure here. So uh, get my, my name uh, number. Again, it's Miles Tennis. And uh, you can get my number off the Showrite website. Hey, give us a follow on any of these social medias that you have. Keep us updated on any winners that you have. And if you have any questions at all and you're just trying to get through the year, call me, text me, whatever it takes. Let's try to get you a good calf this year. Let's try to get you a more successful year. I appreciate each one of you a bunch. You're more than welcome at any point to ask any more questions for the next minute here. I'll buzz off and then you can text me or call me anytime that you want. But uh, Again, I appreciate you. Uh, Billy, appreciate you. And, and Zach's on here as well, our marketing guy. And, uh, appreciate each one of you. And uh, can't thank you enough for sitting through this. I know it was a little bit more time than some of you anticipated, uh, but hopefully it was worth your time. And I wish you good luck as you continue your path here through the year with your calf. Hey, Miles, thank you very much. Thank, thank you to the entire show right team. We, we appreciate all the support and uh, knowledge that you guys share with us, uh, not just tonight, but throughout the entire year and show season. Uh, for all you guys that are still out there, uh, this uh, webinar was recorded. We'll have a replay available for you. So if you would like to watch it again or listen, we'll have that available. Just let us know and we'll be sure to get it over to you. And like Miles said, we're here to help. Use us as a resource. The team at Del Marva and myself will help you out any way that we can. And we also have the entire Surewright team at our disposal for um, any unique situations or challenges. So with that, I guess if there's any questions, we'll, we'll gladly take them. If not, um, hope everybody has a good evening. You bet. Thank you very much, Miles. And thank you, Zach, there behind the scenes. Absolutely. Thank you. I would say questions look good for now. And uh, again, look up my phone number and shoot me a text or call anytime. More than welcome to. So, Zach, I think we're good.